But like you're obviously like writing the prescriptions, so to speak, for this diet. So what have you seen? Like talk to me about the the role of the ketogenic diet as a, as a therapeutic option for people with mental illness. So I'll give you the, you know, the science version is that although most people know the ketogenic diet is a weight loss diet, it's also used for type 2 diabetes. You know, it's also being used in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. And it's importantly for me as a psychiatrist, it is used as an epilepsy treatment. And the reason that's really important is because we use epilepsy treatments in psychiatry every day in tens of millions of people. Mm. So all, almost, most epilepsy meds, not 100% of them, but most epilepsy meds end up getting used in psychiatric patients. And they actually get used in tens of millions of psychiatric patients more, because psychiatric patients are much more common than epilepsy patients. Um, and so we actually have a tremendous amount of neuroscience literature on this. So the ketogenic diet changes neurotransmitter systems, changes hormones, decreases brain inflammation, changes the gut microbiome. It actually changes gene expression. It does all sorts of things. We have solid reason to believe, gosh, those would really be helpful in these people with serious mental illness. Um, because there's a lot of overlap between epilepsy and serious mental illness. Mm. That's the science answer that I've come to. But the reality is that I kind of stumbled into it just by accident. Mm. And how'd that happen? So, so it really started, you know, I started using low carb keto diets 20 years ago, started with myself for my own stuff my own metabolic syndrome. I had had a history of mental illness myself. Hmm. I noticed significant changes and improvement. Um, started recommending it to friends and family. They too were noticing significant improvement. And then probably like 18 years ago-ish or so, I started using it in patients with treatment-resistant depression and other disorders. Wow. And it was working. But I laid low because ketogenic diet is highly controversial. I didn't want to lose my license. It was like, you know, it was, so I just laid low with it. And that all changed in 2016 when one of my longstanding patients with schizoaffective disorder asked for my help to lose weight. So schizoaffective disorder is a cross between schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. So this man was 33, had hallucinations and delusions every day. He was tormented by his illness, completely paranoid, could barely leave home. Um, he had tried 17 different medications. None of them stopped his symptoms, but they caused him to gain massive amounts of weight. Mm. So he weighs 340 pounds. And he's like, can you help me lose weight? And for a variety of reasons, we ended up deciding to try the ketogenic diet. And even though I was using this in depressed patients, I didn't expect it to do anything for him because he had schizoaffective disorder. It's totally different. We put him on the ketogenic diet. He starts losing weight. And within two weeks, I noticed this powerful antidepressant effect. Wow. And he's just making better eye contact, talking more, smiling more. But he's still having hallucinations and delusions. That hasn't changed at all. And I'm thinking, wow, that's really interesting. Like, hey, he's getting this antidepressant effect. That's cool. Hmm. Um, I didn't really expect that in him because he's got a totally different disorder. The shocking thing was that like six to eight weeks in, he just spontaneously tells me, you know those voices that I hear all the time? They're going away. Whoa. And like, I really don't hear them that much anymore. And when I do hear them, I can ignore them now. Like, I'm not going to let them fuck up my life anymore. And, and then a little more time went by. And then he said, you know how I always, he went on about these paranoid conspiracy theories. You know how I thought there were all these families controlling me and they could beam my thoughts into other people's heads and they were all trying to get me and they had targeted me and on and on and on. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I, I, we could talk about that again for the millionth time. Oh. And he says, 
I don't think that's true anymore. Wow. And now that I say it out loud, it sounds kind of crazy. Like, maybe I've had schizophrenia all along, like everybody's been trying to tell me, but I refuse to believe. And maybe it's going away. So that, that man went on to lose 160 pounds and has kept it off to this day. But he was able to do things he hadn't been able to do since the time of his diagnosis. He was able to go out in public and not be paranoid anymore. He was able to complete a certificate program. He performed improv in front of a live audience. He was able to move out of his father's home for a while. He's a karate instructor now. Wow. These are like things he would have never been able to do. And that completely changed everything for me as an academic psychiatrist. Wow. 